Okay, uh, Jean-Pierre Bacolo, um, it's great to have you here with us. Um, could you tell us about uh, Les Seignantes and what was the, the idea behind making it Africa's potentially first lesbian vampire movie? <laughs> um, I would actually say that um, uh, the main idea was actually to, to speculate a little bit, you know, and to really move from, um, let's say, the, the to move, to bring cinema, let's say, on a sphere um, that it doesn't usually go. I think um, the future here help us to actually ask the what if question. What if tomorrow, you know, Cameroon would be this or that? What if what we do today will actually end up this way or that way? So I think what, um, uh, the whole idea of uh, science fiction here is made to speculate and to, some people would say to make a cautionary tale, even if it's vampire-like, <laughs> but it's just the idea that we, um, uh, we should really be able to go with cinema as far it could actually get us. Uh, you would say, for example, that um, 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 with the film, uh, with the film um, it's also the almost impossible anticipation film as it's an impossible detective film. Because in Africa, you know, it's very hard, for example, to have all this car chase <laughs> because police cars never have gas. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that how do you put all this genre in the context and, you know, still, you know, make the genre. So it's a little bit that whole um, um, game, I mean, if I can call it that way, it's that, that whole um, exercise that this film is about. Another thing is also that uh, the girls actually, I use them a little bit like you would use police in a film, you know, because they are, they are political. As soon as you talk about girls and sexuality, you know, all the institutions are involved, religious institutions, the state, you know, and its prostitution. So you really have like a lot of people interested in controlling it. So I just thought it was a good also way to actually talk about all the other stuff, you know, um, Mm, that one wouldn't suspect by with, by having that genre. Obviously, um, it's also good to push the limits of the, the, the visual aesthetics. You know uh, what we could actually do. You know uh, visually. Uh, you, you know, like the girls are fighting in the film. You know, so it's always funny because when people fight in Africa, they always fight like in Chinese because you have to try <laughs> fight in Japanese. So they idea, why don't you fight in Africa? Mm -hmm. So. So I use the, the the dance, you know, like the Senegalese dance, you know, the choreography, uh, and all this, whatever you can call it, uh, voodoo, whatever, you know, magic. But the idea is that, you know, the body of the girls is actually the only weapon they have. You know, they use it, you know, obviously to get what they want from this big government official. They also use it to fight against them. They also use it, you know, really to kind of um, almost become you know, something else, you know. So I just thought it was very interesting to play with all these different things and um, and just tell a story, you know, which, you know, as a lot of people say of corruption, but not the way, you know, anybody would talk about it. Yeah. So the aesthetic side of things where, uh, was really a way of opening up both stylistic and aesthetic possibilities and political possibilities to talk about the political situation that wasn't wasn't get bogged down in you know cr criticizing the president or the party in power. That was about a sort of statement on the the state of Africa and where things might be heading, but also thinking about how you might represent that. Yes, uh, even if the politics is important, but at the same time, it's not the only thing for sure. Um, for example, you you remember in the film there is this Mvungu. You know, Mvungu, you know, obviously people want me to define it, but obviously I won't define it because you know, it's part of the Women's Secret Society. Mm -hmm. I'm not a woman mm -hmm. and it's secret, so nobody will know anything about it. Just watch the film. <laughs> but it's also a way to link the past and the future. You know, obviously this thing is like a traditional thing. Now, actually what they say about it is that when everything was going wrong, I Google it. So, so it's like when everything was going wrong, women will kick men out and take over. So that's the only thing I knew about it. Yeah. So I thought it was an interesting thing to use. But at the same time, I use it in 2025. So because, you know, there's always this idea that the past and the future in Africa, 
you know, can't really connect, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I, I think, you know, uh, um, because in the film you see also these women actually, these older women who are like um, the, the godmothers of, you know, this young girl, you know, who have access to the politician mm -hmm. and who can play with the power and the corruption and all this stuff. So I, I, I was just trying to use all these elements that are like African, but play with them differently and really open up, you know, different things, you know. Um, obviously, it's a little like experimental in a way, but um, I felt that this surreal kind of ambience is also very African because it's not just about what you see, it's also what people have in their mind. And I actually think people's mind over there is a little bit like the film, you know. Yeah. And do, you, do you think this, uh, this sort, of, sort of aesthetic is something that is being taken up more and more by African directors in, in a film such as Viva Riva? I don't know if you know it. So that, that, is it that younger directors are moving on in that style and mixing up um, uh, popular and experimental, but also magic and real and looking to the future. I really think one of the things with the visual you know, is that um, uh, a lot of young people don't like, uh, a lot of young Africans don't like the way Africa look. And they even don't like what more what um, is being shown about them, you know. So uh, when you mention like in Congo, they do a lot of effort to change the look in music videos. They really do work very hard to to really make it look like the way they like um, or what they like. In the fame, obviously, because I'm a man and I was making films about girls or women, you know, because they are a little bit young girls, young women, you see, and. One of my worries was that I shouldn't make a film, you know, where girls won't like themselves, you know, because obviously I could have done, I could have been exploitative about, you know, um, that representation. But I felt that it was very important for me to make sure that it doesn't matter how bad the girls are in the film, but they had to look, I mean, girls have had to like the way uh, they look, you know, uh, because that's also part of. The, the rejection, you know, young people have about African cinema in Africa. Uh, obviously now they watch all these American films and all that stuff, um, but the, the idea they have of themselves, or all they, what they want to see of themselves, you know, it's very important. And I also think cinema has this function of helping people projecting themselves into a world. Uh, it's like, how can you get what you can't see? You know, obviously, my film is a little bit horror, so <laughs> I don't want them to get horror. But I'm just saying, that aesthetically, even if the film could be a little bit scary, I think you know uh, it was important for people, and mainly you know young people in Africa when they watch it, for I want them to like it, you know, to like the aesthetic of it. At least maybe they will think that their environment can be changed, that it could look different uh, than what they actually see now. So that's why, for me, the aesthetic is very important too. That's, that's great. Thank you very much, Jean-Pierre Thank you. Yes.